Well, when the 2019 legislature gavels into session in Tallahassee, State Representative Jose Oliva from South Florida, a Republican, he's from Miami Lakes, will be the first representative from Miami-Dade County to hold the speakership since Marco Rubio had it in 2007 and 2008. Ahead of next week's session, CBS 4's Jim DeFiti spoke to Oliva about his legislative priorities and his political philosophy of limited government. Take a look. If, the, if your guiding philosophy is to keep government out of people's lives, mm -hmm. do you believe that a woman has a right to decide the fate of her own body when it comes to issues such as whether or not to have an abortion? Well, the challenge there is that there are two lives involved. So where I believe that uh, we should stay out of people's lives, I don't believe that people's lives should be taken. And so the, the real, and, and, it's, and it's a complex issue because one has to think, well, there's a host body and that host body has to have a certain amount of rights because because at the end of the day, it is that body that, that carries this entire other body to term. But there's an additional life there. And the, the, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, in, in protection of life, and we do that in all our laws, all parties protect life, uh, what, up to what is the limit to which we are going to give one person complete power over the life of another. It's a complicated issue. I, I wish it would fit neatly into, into uh, libertarian thinking the way a lot of other things do. The truth is it doesn't, so but there if, are two lives involved. So if Roe versus Wade is overturned, or if states are allowed more control over this issue, would you favor banning abortions in the state of Florida? What, what I would favor is one, understanding viability. So uh, we have to look at a couple of things. In, 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 the, in a situation of incest, rape, I mean, they're, they're one and the same. But in, in those types of situations, traumatic experiences, minors that are raped and impregnated, uh, we're talking about there, there are deep psychological effects there. And, and we have to look at is one life worth more than the other there? But, what we, but make no mistake about it, we are making a decision between two lives. And so I'd, I'd, I don't want to disguise it. What I'm saying is that in the event Do you of, believe life begins at, in, at conception? I believe science believes that. I mean, the only definition of science of life is, is something that grows. From the moment that conception occurs, there begins to be growth. And so scientifically, that's what it is. The, but that's not the question. The question is, what is the value of that life? And is it subordinate to the value of its host body? So it's the question of viability then? What, do you, so in other words, you would allow abortion up until the point where, where the fetus was viable? No, I, I, what, what I've said is that it, if, if the life of the mother is in danger or in the case of a minor who has been raped or, or the victim of incest rape, uh, the, 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 mental, uh, the mental capacities of that person are, are deeply in danger. Those are things we should look at. But viability is also very important. As technology moves along, a, a, a human body can exist outside of its host body earlier and earlier. And so then one has to think, Oh, to what time does the host body have veto power over this other life? You realize there are a lot of people who will hear you use phrases like host body and say to you, that's a woman. That's a person. Yeah. That's not a, that's, a, you know, you're, 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 you're sort of creating a scenario where you're looking at that, that not so much as a person, but as a host body. Well, yeah, but, and, uh, but uh, you, you understand that when this discussion is being had, the fetus is also a person and that is being seen as a fetus. And so we can either use technical terms on both sides or we can just use both lives. I'd be happy to do either. The real question is, there are two lives. There is a weight and a quality to both. Both need protection. What is that balance? Let me ask you this. Do you see bills talking about the issue of abortion and viability coming up in this session? I think that they will because of what we've seen nationally. And I, so what do you, where, where do you, what do you think is, is likely to pass the House and what would you support and what would you oppose? I would support things that are consistent with other laws. So in, in the state of Florida, uh, you cannot get a marriage license without a cooling off period of a couple of days just to make sure that two adults, two Two, two capable adults are required to take some time. You're required to take a certain amount of time before you buy a firearm, uh, just in the event that you're making a bad decision for yourself. These are adults, uh, and, and so w without any suspicion that this is a bad decision, you're supposed to take this time. Uh, we don't. We we feel that it is an offense to ask someone before ending another life. 
to take a time and think about it, to fully understand what it is, to well, share the information. So I think I would like something that is consistent with other things we do in our state. The assumption that you're making, though, is, is that the woman has not given thought to it, that has not weighed her options, considered it, before walking into a clinic and, and making that choice. So you see what I'm saying? In other words, you're saying that after some people will hear that and say to themselves, the woman has already made that choice, wrestled with those decisions, decided this is what's in her best interest, walked into a walked into a facility, and now is being told you have to turn around, go home, and come back in 48 or 72 hours. And, and the same argument can be made for a marriage license. The same argument could be made for uh, the purchase of a gun. We, we're making assumptions that perhaps we probably should not make. But one thing that we have said as a state is, in these cases, uh, we're asking you to give it some thought because we think there are, there is some measure of gravity. And, uh, and what we're also saying is, we'd like to provide you with as much information as possible. You can watch all of Jim's interview with Representative Oliva on Facing South Florida. That's Sunday at 11.30 a.m. right here on CBS4.